Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the next episode of Council Sessions. I am here, Dave Cottingham, and we are diving into the burning, biggest burning questions out there in the galaxy today. And for this episode, I brought in the other half of Conversations. Charles, how are you? Maybe the better half? I, you know, I don't, I don't want to oh, go that I far. Wouldn't say, I wouldn't say maybe. I'd say I am the better half. But yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I am it. doing I great. It. Thank you. I'm doing great. fine. Really, thanks for joining me on this episode. Uh, Pat did a great job. We talked about Grey Jedi and Ahsoka and other characters that are uh, down that path. So everybody, if you're listening, please go check that out. But on this episode, um, we are diving into an interesting topic that I really, really, really can't wait to do because... I think for I speak for Charles, both of us are really into the expanded universe, right? The mm -hmm. the novels. Mm -hmm. I, I dive a little bit more into the comics. Um, so we're gonna basically discuss whether or not this material should be relevant or how relevant should this material be is basically the question. So so uh Charles, let's let's just get right into it. Uh what are some of the stories that I guess fall into this category that uh, that kind of stand out to you that you know not only contribute not only great stories but contribute to further stories from either the movies or the TV shows? Right, um, that's a great question because I grew up during the original trilogy and you know, I saw mm. uh, Empire uh, uh, and uh, Empire Strikes Back and then the double feature with The New Hope. So I grew up on the, the original trilogy. And once Return of the Jedi was done, uh, that was it, you know, and as everyone knows, like, okay, that's it. Wonderful three movies. See you yeah. later. George Lucas, you did well for us. Um, and that's, of course, when the book started, or at least the supplemental stories. I had no clue about those. Never even realized they were there. I wasn't much of a big reader. Um, at, at that point, I had transitioned into uh, Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, if you can mm -hmm. cut this out from the audio, Pat is probably going to be uh, really <laughs> angry at me for saying that. But I'll, I'll trust you to get rid of that. Um, okay. So I transitioned out of Star Wars, always loving it, of course, as part of my creativity. But I never explored the expanded universe as, a, as, as it's known right now. Mm -hmm. So when the special editions came out, for me, it was, hey, that's pretty cool. New new scenes, whatever. Still movie-based. Yes. Again, still no knowledge about Thrawn, which had come out at this point. None of this stuff. And then it was the prequel trilogy. And uh, at that time, it just wasn't part of my life where I was enjoying them. Um, I had a little brother at the time who I took to go and see Phantom Menace. He loved it. He, was, he thought it was the best thing ever. He was uh, eight or nine at the time and loved Jar Jar Binks the whole bit. I wasn't that enthused with it. Um, yeah. I don't think I saw Clone Wars in theater. And then I saw Revenge of the Sith. And then the fateful day that Pat and I met. And several weeks, minutes, maybe, <laughs> after we met, um, he was like, have you watched The Clone Wars? Said, ah, no, not really. You know, it's, it's, it's a kid's, kid's show. It's, I don't yeah. like the animation style. So I was being a snob about it, whatever. Didn't realize how, how deep it is. And I think that's the best example from my perspective and where I started as a fan as supplemental material that just makes it mind-blowingly better and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, you know the the attack of the clones feeds into it so it's like a handoff is there but the stories that we see in that series and this is before even season seven so uh, clone war saved just even before then you get these characters rex and wolf and fives and then when you see order 66 in uh, revenge of the sith it, it's it's a completely different movie. So that is a, for me, is a perfect yeah. example of supplemental material that enhances, you know, all three movies. Cause you know, you do hear Qui-Gon, even like I said, before the, um, uh, season seven, you see Qui-Gon in, uh, that's, uh, the, uh, the, the arc with Yoda at the end of season six. Right. So, uh, that's, so to answer your question in a long winded way, uh, um, oh, yeah. Clone Wars would be, uh, for me, a perfect example of supplemental material that's awesome. So I think uh, another example we kind of talked right before we recorded was um, the Aftermath series that that hit the shelves. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that was I remember being at um, I remember being at Celebration. I think that was Celebration Anaheim in 2015 when I first saw that book 
cover sitting in the in the case of the Delray booth, mm-hmm. and I and I saw aftermath. The war isn't over. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. What do you mean the war isn't over? Yeah, and um, I you know, and I, I think I think aftermath, as far as I can tell from the community, was kind of half and half. Half liked it, half didn't like it. Uh, but you know, it clearly defined that Endor wasn't the end of the war. Mm-hmm. The end of the war didn't happen until a year later at the Battle of Jakku. So, to me, that's pretty relevant information, and that that yeah. trilogy to me is pretty relevant. I don't know how you feel about that. Totally. Uh, you know, apart from amazing characters, I know you just covered uh, the first book of yes. the aftermath not too long ago, and those some great characters, but like you said, Jakku and like those, you know, and Aftermath for me was the first set of audiobooks, world novels and audiobooks slash uh, novels that I listened to as supplemental mm-hmm. material after Rebels and this expanded universe of what we consider now in canon, but these extra pieces of materials like, wow, I, I heard about Aftermath and I understood some of the relevance of it. And so I, you know, dove into it. I, I found it hard to read the first book. It was a little bit of a a trudging to get through, although I loved Mr. Bones as a fantastic character and, yeah. and uh, Snap and so, so great characters, but two and three just rolled and steam rolled through, not, you know, and not even to make less importance of some of the uh, story tendrils for Palpatine's existence for the yes. sequel trilogy. So that's a fantastic example that you're connecting, like you said, Jakku. When I read that name, it's like, oh my gosh, Jakku. I mean, this is this is Force Awakens. This is this is fantastic. <laughs> so and it, it it makes for an exciting um, build yeah. up for the uh, for the entire trilogy. So, and I think it's easy for that when you're talking about situations or planets, right? You can you can somewhat get pretty relevant with that you know mm-hmm. making jakku the the place where that end battle happens and of course we've already we are at that point we had already seen it in um uh the horse awakens or we were right. going to see it in Force awakens. To see, yeah but i guess it comes down to really about characters yes you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it, when we get a when we get some additional material be it a book be it a comic or be it a Disney Plus series like Obi Wan, yeah, you know how relevant can do you feel it? Because I do. I feel I feel that sometimes when you have something like that, something so powerful like the Obi Wan series, part of it you're a little you're a little cornered because you know for like for Obi Wan, you know he can't die. Right, you you got his sort of bookends. You already know what what's happening there. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's there's things about that character are restraint because we know in the future he this happens. Mm-hmm. You know, Vader. If they fight, he can't kill Vader. You know, so right. you are shoestringed a little bit. Now, how I I don't know how, when it, so when it comes to characters, um, I mean, how deep can they actually get in these additional stories out there? Well. I'll give you an example. When uh, we just published our uh, Dooku uh, episode, and uh, you know we saw Dooku in, uh, of course, Attack of the Clones, and was mentioned sort of as a, as a sort of nefarious character, and then you see him finally, and of course he meets his end in uh, Revenge of the Sith. But then, of course, coming back to Clone Wars, you see a massive shift in his character, and you you start to get this this groundswell of information. For his character so it fills yeah. him out and gives him a lot more facets to his uh his character but then they uh they wrote so a couple of years ago the uh, dooku jedi lost novel which yes. is a fantastic book it's like four hours uh audio book and I, i'm assuming similar reading time uh but the cast of characters actually i think it's only released as an audio book in fact it um, is well i think the, they they did release the the screenplay oh, the, as a novel okay yeah. gotcha it's phenomenal and that book alone completely took his character from start to where we see him now includes Asajj Ventress. Yeah. So just like you said, you know, you've got these, uh, you know, Camino and Jakku and all these different planets and situations that you, you recognize, or like you see, uh, in the trailer for force awakens, you see the star destroyer that's on the, uh, that's, you know, buried in the sand, you get those visual connections, but 
like you said, the character, uh, in this case, Dooku, is just massively uh, given life and yeah. facets of like complexity. And, well, yeah, I know he's a Sith, but he was a Jedi who questioned the Council somewhat like Qui-Gon, and he's his master, and Yoda was his master. Massively important and so interesting. So how, how so how difficult do you think um d- how difficult do you think Lucasfilm puts on these creators though when they are creating or writing certain characters that do have you know a presence right because you know, because I th- I keep thinking of characters like Leia and Han and Luke especially when I'm reading these comics that take place during the original trilogy, you know, those are massive responsibilities Mm -hmm. that you have to honor these characters. Um, I guess, I guess the other question is it may be not, but do you, do you feel like there's a story out there or additional material you experience that maybe doesn't hold true to a character that you, or maybe changes completely changes your perception of what you thought was a character? I know that's a pretty deep question. <laughs> no, I mean, I'd say Dooku, I think, is a good example. Really? Yeah. Um, with the amount of conflict that he had um, with his story. And like you said, so, I mean, obviously, you know, I've listened to many podcasts with some of the great authors. We all know Claudia Gray and, and um, she, you know, she was talking about uh, her Leia series that she's writing. Yeah. But, they, you know, they obviously have story group and they have to submit their stories and they have to be approved. So their, their arcs are somewhat defined. But um, with uh, Kevin Scott's uh, Dooku Jedi Lost, you know, in the story, the Jedi take him back to his home planet. And as a youngling, um, Padawan, he's brought back to his planet. He runs into his sister. And then, boom, all the family stuff comes back. Yeah. How do you expect that to not affect his character? So there's a there's a little bit of a gray area in there. Perfect. Suddenly you've yeah. gone from a Sith to a, wow, a Padawan who's put through the ringer a little bit and what you just expect him to come out unscathed. So those are the types of things that that would be an example of a character that I think changed my perception, uh, upon watching, uh, or reading that book. Um, yep. Ahsoka is a good example, of course, with the, uh, season seven and the depth with which she went into her character and also her novel. Um, I, let me, uh, let's see what else I I I read. I think along along the Dooku side, I think a, a Ventress is another one that, um, uh, you know, it, it's it's harder it's harder because she was only in the extra material in a sense. Um, yeah. But if you only watch the Clone Wars, you're not getting the full story. Uh, unfortunately, right. they were going to dive into that with Dark Disciple, which ended up being a book. But I think if it wasn't for Dark Disciple, her character would have been so open ended um, mm-hmm. and not as deep. Um, so I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I'm curious. I'm really curious about the Obi-Wan series. Same here. Same here. Because, you know, yeah. yeah. Cause you've, like you said, you've got the bookends and Ewan McGregor is coming back, but he's yes. such an amazing character. And we've got a short window that we're playing with. And if you look at, oh, maybe the Mandalorian, I guess is an example of where you can take a narrative and all these streaming services that make that give a chance to explore a character that goes beyond a movie runtime and can play a little bit with their character development within that short series, uh, I can only hope that it ends up being like what Dooku Jedi Lost did, where you can add in some extra stuff. I mean, of course, I have my hopes and 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 wants to see different things and. But I'm going in there with a whole, you know, clean slate as much as I can to let them uh, explore the character, not necessarily without retconning anything, but keeping everything in the timeline somewhat stable, yeah. but just making it that much better. So can a, uh, so w- what do you think, uh, maybe not just the Obi-Wan series, but t- do you think that, how do I say this? Do you think that a story has to uh can get to the point where it has to be something consumed to in order to you know yeah. get get that full story or do you think it only should stay uh as a bonus material in a sense you know what i mean because yeah. i keep thinking i i do keep thinking to the point where can you have you know can you have a character death 
you know, in, in one of these materials because not everybody consumes this stuff. Right. So, right. You know, it could be a big spoiler for somebody later yeah. on they find out that this person died. They're like, what do you mean they died? Totally. Yeah. Totally. I don't know where you are, where you land in that kind of it's, feeling. It, it's hard, you know, because you have, I don't want to say two levels of, of fans, but I don't want to break it down to that sort of two different sort of groupings, yeah. but you've got people like us who are going to consume as much as we can and are just completely in the story. And then you've got, uh, like my wife, for example, who likes the movies and was, has always enjoyed them. And, uh, and one of her favorite, I think probably her favorite movie is solo uh, star Wars story. Cause she just mm. loves the, 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 um, the action. And we went to go see it as a family, great action, great fun, you know, uh, excellent movie. Yeah, we were, we were in the car on the way home, and she literally said, "Wait, I thought that mall guy died in the movie." So, okay, I didn't pull over the car, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I gave her the quick uh, overview of what happened with Maul and in uh, Clone Wars, and then where he actually dies in Rebels. So, oh, okay, huh. So, but that's, that's the problem that, you know, are you making a that's, movie for the deep fans? Or are you making a, a movie for just the regular fans? And it's a very fine balance because you want to have those, those moments of where the deep fans go, Ooh, ooh oh, oh, it's, it's more. Yes. And the other people are like, uh, Oh, that's cool. That, look at that face paint. That's pretty cool. And just like, whatever, you know, that's the end of the movie. So it's, it's a very fine line of if, if the fan who you're just trying to market to for just a regular fan starts to ask questions of how the story is developing and that takes away from the story. That's where the problem starts. Yeah. And that's what I would think. Well, it's funny. You were, we must be on the same wavelength because I was <laughs> going to bring up the mall situation in solo next and you hit it right on the head because I, I similarly too, I went with, we went, I went with a big group of friends and people that I work with. And of course, not everybody there had watched the Clone Wars. So several of them after the th were like, wait a minute, was that Darth Maul? I'm like, well, yeah, he's alive. He's been Duh. alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean he's alive? He got cut in half. So, uh, but that, but do you, do you think that the, do you think that was a mistake, particularly in Solo? Was that a mistake actually putting Maul into that movie? No, I don't. Uh, because I think his story can be, I think any story can really be explained, you know, whether it's going to be supplemental material. And I get the fact that you want to make everything accessible at sort of a one sort of entry level. Uh, I, I think it actually increases the curiosity of just how that would have happened. Um, even in my, you know, five or six minute retelling of the story, uh, my wife was like, oh, that's, that's cool. That sounds like a yeah. lot deeper than you would have expected. Um, the, I think where, some of the lore comes into, and I, you know, uh, you know, whatever the people's opinions of the sequel trilogy, I really enjoyed them all for their, for what they are. The novelizations of those movies certainly added mm -hmm. some extra pieces and right. added to some complexity. And that's more than a character, which is funny to say, but the, some of the choices or the comments or the character arcs, let's say in the last Jedi with Luke that were in the novelization that weren't in the movie, um, actually helped explain where he was at that moment in in his life and his view Tried. of the force and and similarly with uh the rise of skywalker and some of the explanations they actually did to how palpatine could have come back even though there was speculation but also like we said already in aftermath there was already these the not the contingency plan but the um can't think of the term but he had a, a plan for of course, his everlasting long life, you know. So mm -hmm. as a deep Star Wars fan, you could sort of see how it would happen. As a regular fan, I think that was probably my wife's biggest complaint. It's like, oh, it's him again. And again, yeah. once I explained it, oh, okay. The reception was a lot more tepid than Maul's was. But I don't think Maul was as big as a character for the whole entire saga as Emperor Palpatine was. And I think maybe that's where the break is. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, that was a harder sell. Yeah, I, I agree. And and I think, you know, I think that the sequel trilogy, no matter how divided it seems like it was with the fan base, um, I actually think in the long run, a lot of 
fans will come to appreciate it more. It's mm-hmm. simply the fact because there's 30 years between six and seven. Mm-hmm. That's relatively just uh, empty. We don't know many of the stories that are in there. And I think that's where I think Lucasfilm is going to go that route and start mm-hmm. filling in those gaps. I mean, to the point where it's almost very similar to the original trilogy, right? You, you got thrown into the civil war mm-hmm. and we never knew how it really started. And it took 18 years until we actually got to see how it started. I think it, over time, we're going to see uh, just how it went from six to seven, um, truly in the eyes of the characters that really mattered. And I think not really matter, but, uh, you know, because, you know, with Aftermath, it was, like you said, the kind of a new group of characters yep. and somewhat their stories kind of got ended. You know, Snap kind of went on to become yeah. part of the the sequel trilogy. But but, you know, there's a comic out there that we've talked about on, on Beyond the Saga also, uh, The Rise of Kylo Ren. Right. That right. is a massive co- contribution to what happens in yep. the sequel. I mean, it's so it made things like that become more relevant. And I think uh, I just I just think I think I ultimately think that these stories um I think they they should be as relevant as the author is allowed to make them right. or the creator is allowed to make them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we kind of we kind of got, a, I think, a little taste of possibly um, uh, possibly of the counterpart to this is with the, you know, the the novel of the Mandalorian that was supposed to come out later this year. Right. Right. Yes. That gets pulled. Mm-hmm. And I can only imagine it got pulled because the show is taking a different direction in some of the storytelling right. and it contradicts right. Right. what's happening in that. Right. I totally agree. I totally agree. And in thinking about this, this topic, uh, I had a revelation today that try this on for size. Okay. Streaming services and um, limited run series on Disney plus will be the core material and the movies will be the supplemental. Whoa, whoa. I think that is a whole nother council session. Uh, because if, think about like now we've got the new High Republic, yeah. right? Brand new series of stories. We only have them in book format. So now we've got a new source of like 200 years, but brand new stories, brand new characters. So you're going to have an established uh, run of characters and stories and, and themes and all these different kinds of things for a, uh, a medium that we've only been reading and seen visually in a comic book. How are they going to support that? I know at the end, there's the, like, the Acolyte, I think, is the series. Yes. It's going to be a streaming series on Disney+. Plus. So I don't necessarily mean that as an absolute, but what I do think is that Disney is finding uh, successful stories in the formats that people are willing and wanting to read them or consume them in mm-hmm. beyond the movies. It's going to be a book. It's going to be a streaming service, uh, maybe video games. Cause I mean, the video games are car- our canon now. That's right. And if Cal Kestis ever shows up, who's Cal Kestis? I mean, that's going to be a hard one to describe, especially since that's... I stuck with video games and I haven't finished it yet, but <laughs> that's not the point. <laughs> uh, the, uh, all these different avenues. Uh, look at Fortnite. My son plays Fortnite. Uh, he wasn't cool enough to do it when it came out, but if he was, he was in f- where they announced the um, uh, the Emperor's message uh, yes. in game. That's right. So they're really spreading the media into which they're pulling in fans or pulling in stories and making them accessible where they are. And that's only good news for the franchise in the long run because kids today who are watching The Rise of Skywalker as their first movie, like mm-hmm. you said, in 30 years, they're going to be demanding extra stories and fleshing that out. So it's perpetual, and it's I think that's a great thing. I love that thought, though. I think, um, I think the success of Disney Plus has had to have really taken the leadership of Disney to rethink, like you said, the importance of those series. You know, I think that, uh, I mean, you're kind of seeing in the Marvel world as well, right? Right. right. I mean, those are basically mini movies that are on there and very relevant to what's happening on the screen in the MCU. And I think you're right. I think because of the limited number of movies that it seems like we're going to get in star wars now which i i can't believe i want a movie every year uh, if not two or three yeah, <laughs> but, exactly but yeah if, if, but if i'm going to get 
10 shows on Disney Plus, then that does seem like where Star Wars is going to live. And right. I completely think you're right. I think that's I think that's completely relevant. I think that um wow, and uh, and um one one last thing that I'll throw in too as far as games. I I've played the uh Vader Immortal, you know, VR oh, games. Yeah. I'm telling you, that that opens a whole different perception of of Vader in that time period. I mean, that takes place um you know, uh, I think it's um, five or six years prior to episode four. Um, wow. Somewhere around that time. And he's still trying to figure out how to bring Padme back. Oh, wow. That must like height of emotion, height of power. That I mean, I've heard it's scary and I haven't, I haven't played it yet, but uh, <laughs> I'd love to. But I can only imagine how intimidating that is. But there you it, go. And it's. And talk about limited accessibility. So you got to have a very certain rig and setup to make that happen. I, absolutely, and and but but I, I think there's that. I think there is that line that that uh, Lucasfilm is 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 trying to paint that if you want to experience this these additional mm-hmm. materials, it will enhance uh, you, the importance of these characters and further those stories. But I I question, I still question whether or not at some point they will be uh, required. Mm. Um, You know what I mean? Like, I I don't, I don't know. I think, I think, uh, I think, I think Disney's going to try to make some of those required. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's, I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or not. Yeah, I agree. I think it's uh, like I said, it's a fine line where you're, you know, having to consume something, whether it's a game or it's uh, a book, comic book or a novel that's, uh, you know, several years old um, to make something more enjoyable. You know, I, would they make a mistake of, ba- you know, of banking an entire story based on an outside of, let's say, movies or Disney Plus streaming service? Probably not. Right. So they probably wouldn't do that way. Uh, you know, let's say, you know, make a a complete movie about Cal Kestis, you know, right. maybe for some people it would work, you know, right? it's a new, it's a new Jedi. And then people who know it's like, well, actually he's not new. He's from Jedi fallen order and whatever, but well, or, or what if they did a movie around the high Republic? Right. Right. You know, I think, I think you can do it. I think you'd have to just re retell the origin or something, right. you know? Yeah. And that'd be a tough part. That would be a very tough part. So if the acolyte is the start of a, sort of a culmination because it sounds like if i remember correctly it's like the end of that sort of 200 that year era, gap. yeah mm-hmm. yeah that era uh the summary is going it'll be very interesting how it's going to happen because you've got uh, although the propensity for some of these characters to die off like that maybe you're not gonna have to worry about it you're not gonna have to reduce anybody by the time <laughs> comes around. yeah but yeah, um, true but uh but yeah it's uh it's a really interesting time and exciting time because there's so many different places to look for the supplemental material and then all the while you've got the nine or 12 movies, you know, with, um, with solo and with, uh, rogue one, and then you got Andor series coming up. So all these, this ecosystem is constantly in flux and, uh, that's, what's really exciting about it. Mm-hmm. So what, what has been your, uh, just so the listeners could hear what has been your favorite material? Like what, uh, I know novels of which you've dived into. So what's been your favorite of those novels to, to experience uh, yeah uh that's a really great question uh i would say as a, a grouping i think the aftermath is really really good for what it does for the sequel trilogy but also bookending um the uh, original trilogy uh duke of jedi loss I, I love master and apprentice has been fantastic yes bloodline it. uh was amazing you know there were some really really good books out there i'm i'm actually uh i did alphabet squadron started um shadow fall so i'm reading that one now so that's an interesting nice. thing. but like, lost stars i mean all these different stories i offer such great extra little mm-hmm. bits and lost stars for example is a great little offshoot of a completely different perspective of the original trilogy yes. so it's there's something out there for everybody and even outside of canon if you want to call it the plagueis novel you know that doesn't mean that if you don't know the uh the eu i I have no knowledge at all about the eu but Mm -hmm. because it's there that's a cool story to learn about one day 
yeah like like knights of the old republic or something but the plagueis novel was extremely right on that cusp of the buyout by disney and uh some in- very interesting character arcs for palpatine and you can see where mm-hmm. you know with one or two tweaks this could be canon it'd be so cool for an origin story so Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I know I listed off a lot of them there, but uh, sorry. No, I'm, I'm with you on, on I'm with you on pretty much all of those. Uh, one that I don't think gets a lot of praise that I really enjoyed because again, I think it added a lot to the character is James Lucino's Tarkin novel. Um, I have not read that one yet. Oh, I loved that book. Cool. So because th- you basically get his whole upbringing. Yeah, and it is. It opens your eyes to who he is that's man cool. I'm telling you. yeah so so there's tarkin and, I, and there's dark disciple right because that's uh that's ventress that's ventress yes right okay that's, that, those were the clone wars episodes that didn't air and it involved uh quinlan voss quinlan voss and, that's right and uh and uh, asajj and um there's some obi-wan in there but it's yeah it's centered around ventress and her 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 flirting with the light and the dark and coming yeah. back it's it's phenomenal it's it's that's so cool. good I got that. So yeah, Tarkin was uh, interesting because you know I think it was actually the second canon novel that got released right after A New Dawn. Uh-huh. Um, so not many people, you know, were on the bandwagon yet of reading these novels. So I never really heard anybody talking about it. But he wrote James Lucino wrote Catalyst, which was a phenomenal Phen- book. Absolutely. Yep. Right yeah, so if you that like that, you, sh- you should go okay, check out cool. Tarkin. Because yeah. they're on the same time, right? Like as they're ascending into the Empire, or <laughs> there's other tendrils that goes back into like Rogue One ish style st- territory. Yes, I think I think Tarkin. There's a, there's a present day part of Tarkin, which I think is more um, like Episode One type, because uh, okay. he because there's a point where he meets Palpatine really early on. Okay. But then it's really his upbringing on his the planet. And I can't remember the planet he grew up on, but it was pretty harsh and wow. it's really cool. I'd, I, I mean, I really need to go back and re re uh, reread it or re listen to it because it's uh it's phenomenal. Of course, it, you know, and then you, you like, you know, the audio books, when these people do these character voices and they yeah. nail it, it is just incredible. Yeah, they're artists, absolute artists. They are. All right. So let's, finish up on the fact that uh did <laughs> did we answer this did you, did you get an answer for this question basically th- is is the extra material uh to you just 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 how relevant should the the material be in your mind i would say it has to be 75% relevant 75% 25% and i'll <laughs> give that 25% to the people who can enjoy it still have a good story to watch, mm-hmm. but not required that that small little well quarter one uh, one quarter of that movie is full of mentions or visuals or uh, tendrils back to other stories that are outside of the main sort of yeah. core story that it's telling that are there for the deep fans who will just go crazy on it and and enjoy it that much more and maybe then affect. The other person's viewing of it to, to be a bit more curious about it or want to go and explore the story so uh, that's that would be my hope is that it spurs more um understanding or a knowledge about of the stories that they're referencing yeah no i'm with you i think i think i think i would say that if it, it, i want the stories i want the stories to be relevant in a right. sense that I want to read it and really learn something that progresses the story that I already know. Mm-hmm. And I, a clear example I'll say of that is in the comic series, the Star Wars comic series between four and five, you find out how Vader figured out Luke's name, right? Wow. How, how he finds out who Luke Skywalker is. Wow. Right? I have no clue. I did not know this. Exactly. Wow. So to me, I loved it because that's a huge relevant story. <laughs> yeah. But you don't need, like you said, you don't need to read it in order to watch Empire Strikes Back. Right. Right. Um, but man, does it add to the emotions that are happening in Empire as you figure out how that those three years went between mm-hmm. Luke and Vader and Leia and Han. Uh so that so I I do want the stories to be relevant just because 
like you, I dive into most of them, but, um, but there's a, there's a, there's a, a hard aspect to not making it required. Right. Right. So that's, that's where I'm at. And, you know, I hope, uh, I hope people do take a chance and go venture out beyond the movies and beyond the Disney plus series and read some stuff, look at some comics, play the Vader game, play as Cal Kestis and discover yeah. more about the holocrons and Jedi and all this stuff, you know, yeah. <laughs> it just, it just makes, oh, I mean, it just makes star Wars all together so much better. Yes. You know? Yeah. And it informs all the way back to the high Republic. They're mentioning some of the planets and some of the, the, the things that we know today back 200 years prior. Yes. prior to it. So while you're getting a slew of new characters, you still have some uh, home bases of, of, okay. Okay. Uh, they said um, uh, Coruscant there. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. You got that. All right. All right. I'm yeah, placing myself, you know, <laughs> you know, that's, and I, I totally agree with what you're saying is that you want to have, a story that's consumable, but uh, can have so much more richness just by knowing how Vader knew his name. You know, lo- no longer is it a uh, almost like a joke, like "Oh yeah, who would have known to go back to the planet where I spent most of my youth to look for the kid with my last name?" You know, so yeah, exactly. That's, uh... <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, no, it's very, it's very interesting. I hope, I hope you actually dive into it a little bit and find that out because it's. Well, now that I know that, I'm going to have to. <laughs> yes, it's pretty cool. So, all right, Charles, thank you so much for, for joining me on this episode. Well, you're welcome. It was absolute blast. Thank you so much for having me on. As I said with Pat, this was a, a fantastic conversation. So there you go. <laughs> go check out conversations.com. Uh, these guys are all over the podcast feeds on Twitter. That's uh, at Swations. Uh, they're on Facebook, Instagram. Go check these guys out. They're a huge asset to the Star Wars community. Uh, please show your support and, and give them a listen. So, um, again, thank you so much, Charles. Hope to talk soon, man. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it, and uh, re- you know, love your show. And if no one's if if you can listen to every back episode like we did of your show because it's fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. There's a lot of them now. There is. <laughs> All right. Uh, take care, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, we will be back next time. Uh, hit that subscribe button for more, and we will talk to you soon. For Charles, I'm David Cottingham. May the force be with you.